Good day, Lords and Ladies, and welcome back to Citizen Sleeper. Um, in the last episode, things went belly up, unfortunately. Um, yes. Lots of things went wrong. So, now we're in a situation where <laughs> uh, we're trying to fix the situation, hopefully. If not, we're screwed, but hey ho. I'm not going to let us sleep unless we do these, right? Okay. As you walk into the bay of the clambering, clambering burr, um, the familiarity of the space overcomes any trepidation. It feels good to be back, and the return feels earned, especially after all the work it took to figure out a route through the flotilla's jumble of sips that might lead you to this blue streak. You see Essie and Peaky immediately sitting at the bit back of the bay, deep conversation, their closeness, forces you to stop, suddenly aware that you might be interrupting something private. Peaky is gesturing wildly as Essie stares out into the middle distance, hunched over. As Peaky tries to get her attention, you spot, she spots you. Sleeper, she nods. Didn't quite turn out like we hoped, right? Peaky stops and glances between the two of you, the tension rising. The plan was always risky. You see? For me, more than you, Essie shakes her head. Maybe if you'd spent less time trying to question it, things could have gone better. Peaky looks nervous. It has worked out. They appeal um, They appeal to you. The Flux event knocked the entire cordon system offline. The Fertilla is free and Havana has backed off. Flux event? That's what the refugees are calling it, Peaky explains. Apparently... That's what they called it when it started happening around Ember. What exactly is happening, you ask? Hard to tell. It's some kind of disruptive wave that only affects electronic systems, peaky chip chips in. Typically, systems are screened against radiation interference out here anyway, but it seems to be dulled, but not stopped by those defences. The crisis continues, Essie sighs. The cordon may be down, but this brings a whole other set of problems. You should tell them, Essie. Peaky glances at her, please. Essie doesn't respond. Tell you what. You stare at her back, waiting for a response. Please, Essie. Haven't they so haven't they shown that they can be trusted? Peaky nods towards you. Essie turns, her arms folded tightly across her chest. She goes to start, then stops. You can see the anger in her eyes, but you realise it's not directed at you, but at anyone else. She is angry with herself. I brought weapons to the Fertilla, she pauses, and now they are gone. You suddenly remember the sleek crates that were tucked into the bay, marked with a yellow sigil, the ones Essie told you were just supplies. What do you mean they're gone, you say? What do you think, Essie snaps. Someone lifted them from the sit bay while I was unloading supplies, she sniffs. At least they are in the hands of the flotilla now. Peaky looks at you. She knows this was a bad move, sleeper, I promise you. He glances back at her. She's just too proud to admit it. Where did you get them from, you say? XPR. Essie gestures around the sit. I wasn't able to leave the colony armed when we escaped. I couldn't trust them not to use them on us. Peaky sighs. I don't know a thing about them, which is why Essie is going to be the one to find them and bring them back. Shouldn't we help, you say? Essie turns. It's okay, Sleep. I don't want anyone getting mixed up in this. This is my responsibility, she looks away. Plus, Peaky adds, you and I have to have work to do. I want to understand the Flux Sleeper to study it. Peaky's eyes light up. This thing is changing the entire system, causing problems across the inner system driving refugees off Ember's moons, and now it's here. If we don't do something about it, Peaky pauses, it's a problem for all of us. I can see more immediate problems, Essie sniffs. Peaky ignores her. I've been looking at the networks, and when the flux vent hit, hit it, when the flux vent hit, it changed things. It suffered systems, corrupted nodes, and broke open data stores. They take out a slate, and so you were flickering polygon. Some of these flux... Flux nodes have appeared near the epicenter of the event, but I can't get access. You, however, 
I saw the way you worked with data when we were preparing for the run. I think you can get things, get into these things. I want you to find a flux node and bring me everything you can extract. They come and go, but most can be found in the barely functioning networks of the wastes. Peaky pauses start there. Perhaps together we can find something that might point us to where the flux is and where it comes from. Okay. They smile. I knew you'd agree. Essie looks indignant. Don't waste too much time chasing ghosts, sleeper. There are people on this flotilla who need any help they can get. I'm sure sleeper can do both, Essie. Peaky smiles at you. I'll see you I'll see you here when you have something good hunt have some good hunting. And they wave you out as Essie stomps away and makes plans for her own. We've got another main story event here, which is these guys. Are we on a timer for that? Delve into flux data. Okay. Step. Yeah, so we basically need to do stuff for them. Flux node. And all the rest of the stuff here is still dark. Okay. Um, and then we've got these guys out here. Docking axis. Ember song. Unwelcome aid. Soul shipment supplies. It's particularly unloaded. The crew is absent. Okay. That's fine. And then we've got this event here. Aki. It's a strange sight. Giving you time spent in the greenway to see a greenhouse choked in red dust. It piles up along the edges, gathers and curving waves and is carried by some unseen wind to whirl in front of a glass ceiling. It is a desert in miniature, a captured landscape of iron-rich sediment and unseen life. Beautiful isn't it remark. The remark comes from another figure standing at the viewing window, so quiet that you hadn't noticed them. Did they just arrive or were they or where have they or were they here before you were? Their cloth swaddled form feels little. looks dead you say the figure laughs it is far from dead you catch a glimpse of a pale face amongst the thick material dark eyes glittering in the red reflecting light they turn to you and as the dust swirls Aki they smile a tight smile you're not from the flotilla am I right I'm not from anywhere you say everyone is from somewhere whether they wish to be or not the red dust glitters in their eyes Wherever it is a good place to be from or not. Aki gathers a cloak around her shoulders against the, the code. What brings you to the wind, to wind's long shadow? S wind's long shadow? This ship, Aki looks at you curiously. Do you often do you often wander around ships you don't know the name of? You're a strange one, Aki raises an eyebrow. I don't know. Whatever, whether to report you or to send you back to where you came from, she smiles to herself, which is nowhere at all. You glance around the empty corridor, suddenly aware of how quiet it is on the ship. Unlike the other ships you have been on, Fatilla here is a silent order to the wind's long shadow, and in this moment it feels unsettling. Where is everyone? Aki waves a hand, asleep mostly. It is night. It, it, it is night on step, and so it is night here. She rubs her soda, at least for those of us who can sleep. Step. She turns away, irritated, eager to change the subject. You hear a creak as a set of subtles slowly begin to close across the glass ceiling of the greenhouse. As you watch, you feel this dissonance this place has has with that word. There's always there's nothing green here. A dust house, perhaps. It takes many systems to preserve this landscape, Aki begins, to simulate the wind cycle, the dust, layer the sand and dirt beneath. You watch the dust swirling, systems that are failing. The flux event, Aki glances at you for a sign of recognition of the term, is eroding our ability to keep this alive, to keep these traces of, st of step alive, she smiles to herself. Which is ironic, because when we left step, the flux had eroded our ability to survive on the moon, now the situation is reversed. Away from the moon, its ecosystems are as fragile as we were, living upon it. Something catches your eye as the subtles, sutters darken the dust house. The winds picking away at the dunes begin to reveal something, a web, a network of, of thick branching forms, and then they close completely and you see nothing in the dark. 
soft blue light flickers on in the corridor, uplighting up Aki and cold cyan. You have piqued my curiosity, but I'm so tired, Aki Sippers. If you do not have a purpose here on the ship, I recommend finding one, otherwise I'm afraid you would need to leave. Make yourself useful, and perhaps we will get another chance to talk, she turns. I'd like that. With that, Aki pads away along the corridor. You stand for a moment in front of the dark dust house, trying to imagine the network of roots under the sand and dust, and then try to imagine the moon that once housed them. Okay, so that's done. Are we on a timer for this? No. Okay. So, I take it that we probably have to help the other refugee ships and push that story along. Right here. Right, we're no longer on a timer. So what I am going to do is I am going to harvest first some mushrooms. Um, Jarel cats we could get. Yeah, let's grab this. Give us three spores. And we set up our fungal farm again. And get that going. Um, throw some money at the problem and get ourselves healed up. Go to there and use a little bit of our scrap to repair ourselves. And then head back over here. So, you can help. We, we have to do the data thing for them if we want to do that. So, let's first of all check out what the node entails. You know, a six straight out, man. We use a five. Bypass. And got the data. I don't want to start his thing though until I've done a couple of the other things on board the ship because I don't want to have too many clocks running at once. Um, so let's just straight up get this going. We'll re roll. Yeah, that will do fine. Soul ship shipment. Someone comes to help you unload a, a while, making the work go quicker. When you ask their name, they ignore you. What's going on? Okay. Let's get that going. There is a, a, a loose crowd around the supplies you have unloaded, and the, and the tense mood brewing among them. You sit nearby on the edge of the subtle docking tunnel, resting. Further away, Furthway crews from Ember Song continue their lives as you who are coming and going, trading, discussing. There is a quiet efficiency in the hub, set up on a common space for a swarm of small ships from Ember Song that are part of the tiller. Unlike Half or Step, there is no one capital ship for this moon's refugees, just a mass of individuals travelling in concert. We told Half we didn't want this scrap. The jeering voice comes out of a small crowd nearby. You turn to see a gaunt, pale man wearing the industrial work gear you've seen many of the Song's refugees were wearing. You hear me? These supplies are to help, you say. He smirks. Oh, how noble of you, coming out of here to help us singers. There's a rumble of anger around the crowd. We agree to join the Fertilla for, for joint protection. We do not agree to Ember's half using the Fertilla to secure their control of the moons. You realise... Perti is addressing the crowd as much as he's addressing you. With the cordon down, our crews are more than capable of acquiring what is needed from the eye, what is owed as restoration for keeping us restrained. He pats one of the crates you unloaded. What we need, will we will take. Sol wants to cooperate, he says, you say. 
Sol is a farmer. Even the people of Song know that. He is simply the sole survivor of Harv's leadership. His authority means nothing. Petri looks around the crowd. Harv thinks that they can buy us, but remember the past. The rumble of our agreement runs through the crowd. He smiles at them. Take the supplies if you wish, of course. We are not wasteful. Petri approaches you direct. The crowd tentatively moves forward, and by the time he reaches you, they're already dragging away crates and disturbing the contents. I am not one for shooting the messenger sleeper, says Petty as he approaches, but we are cannot concede to half here, not for a moment. I don't understand, you say. I can see that. Petri sits beside you on the docking tunnel's lip. What was your plan, sleeper? Unload the supplies and wait for someone to start throwing them back at you? He, he nods at the crowd rifling through the crates, because that was what was about to happen. So I should thank you, you say? Petri bows a little. My pleasure. What do you think happened to the crew of this shuttle? He shakes his head. They were chased out of this place. What is happening here, you say? We are maintaining our independence, he smiles. Do you know anything about Ember's Moon, Sleeper? Or were you planning to wander into this fertility totally blind, an objective outsider offering help? He rolls his eyes. I know a little, you say. A little is, is the same as nothing, the man replies. I'm going to assume you know the basics. The giant gas ember has se just the giant gas ember has several moons, seven moons. The three biggest are Ember Step, Ember Song, Ember's Heart. He winks. We can cover the four sisters next session. Step was the first to be settled at a contract old a contract old Solheim gave to the terra terraformers Cybella systems when they first claimed the Helion system. That's the way way back when. Step was the testing ground, and like most testing grounds, it didn't turn out well. A parcel of atmosphere slowly slo slouching off each orbit, a dysfunctional ecosystem and a whole load of dust-clogged settlers. The place is a miserable desert long past its best before date. So Sebeli moved to half, where they redoubled their efforts, the subsurface ocean and some balmy tidal heating helped, allowing them to build a real atmosphere, a real habitable world. A fact that the typical half colonists won't ever let won't ever let you forget. So did Syllabili achieve such a thing, you might wonder? Well, that's where we come in. It's that some same old rule of surrogacy. The one humanity built our universe around. Petri claps a hand to his chest in mock pride. My moon, Ember Song, is a sulfur-soaked rock covered in volcanoes, tidal heat, tidally heated by its inner orbit to sweltering temperatures, exactly the kind of crucible you need to fuel a terraforming project. Energy, industry, fuel. Song provided the raw materials for half. Petri grimaces, willingly or not. And a crucible requires people to run it. Us singers born into a flaming pit and asked to soak, its, soak to stoke it so others might live in paradise in the making. That's what we had to endure until Solheim brought everything down. Petri rattles off his speech from memory and you wonder how many times he has delivered it. No Solheim, no contract, no contract, no Sibylle. No Sibylle meant free moon suddenly independent. Petri shakes his head. It was a war sleeper, sometimes hot, sometimes cold, and surprisingly Half and Step came out better than us. Yet, Petri holds up a hand. They need us, Sleeper. Always have. So, we are the linchpin. We are the centre around which the moon's orbit, not swirling ember. We are resisted, we've resisted takeovers, sieges and expansions, and now we'll resist this. Half the people on the ship think the flux was caused by half intentionally or otherwise and i have to say some cycles i agree so before coming before so you so before you can come here to hand out supplies like a good soldier maybe educate yourself what does that matter now you say petri six has said do you forgive crimes against yourself so easily sleeper would you return to the bosom of asin asin up if they went if they sent someone to collect petri stares at the crowd don't presume to judge us I want you to imagine what it is like to try to live on an airless volcanic rock when every system that sustains you starts setting down. He spits and wipes the sleeve across his mouth. We abandoned nothing. Some stayed, others left. 
but we will reclaim Ember as soon as the flux fades or ends. We've withered worse. Don't you need the supplies, you say? As I said, we will take what we need when we need it. Petri stares out into the axis. There is nothing, no authority that will we recognize here. I won't keep you from docking from the docking axis, sleeper. No one here has the authority for that. But watch yourself here. Try to remember that the eye is just another in la a long list of people who have tried to control us. I understand, you say. Petri nods. Then let, us, let, then let, it, then let it guide your accents. Petri sighs. Look, we are many, and we have many needs. Ships come to the stocking axis for repairs, for acquisitions, for friendship. You can provide these as well as any singer. If you want help, if you want to help, help in your own your own name, sleeper, not in the name of the half. Petri shakes his head. Carry that name here, and you will lose all trust. Be as you are. Be as we are. Act in your own name alone. Petri ha puts a hand on your shoulder and stands. I hope I didn't just waste my time here, Sleeper. And with that, he walks away back to a sink shrinking crowd that distributes the last of the supplies amongst the crews, the crews present. You watch them pass the food and water between them, no signs of conflict between the crews, just a carefully distribution of resources. Petri chats with a few crews, each of them casting looks in your direction, ones that reveal little about the singer's intentions. You stand, it seems the tension of the might runs much deeper than you expect. This won't be easy. Okay, fantastic. That's what we need. An absolute mess of interwoven politics. Nationalism and politics and everything else in between. Let's drop this off. Sleeper, come look at this. Peaky is poring over one of the displays of the makeshift decoding suite that is set up in the clambering bay, bay Burr's cargo bay. On the screen, a clump of data, a clump of part data pathways, like an ingrown football, has start to untangle. This is an exact existing node corrupted by the flux event. It's totally twisted up. They glance at you to check you are listening. But inside, you watch as the unwinding pathways leave behind patterns of negative space, like shadows staying behind despite the casting, their casting leaving, the cast of leaving. It's a whole other data set. Peaky eyes shine bright in the pale screen light. The flux event somehow seeded its data deep into the gaps in the node, wrapping it around them around it. What's in there, you say? Not sure, Peaky frowns. It isn't being very cooperative. You watch the screen, a pattern of shadows becoming obvious now as each layer of the pathways is pulled away. The flux event itself really did a number on the unprotected nodes like this one. Most of the eye systems are screened against radiation interference, but these exposed nodes? Peaky makes a, rip a ripping motion with his hands, torn apart. Peaky points to a thick tendril of threads on the screen. Look here. here. It looks like it's been tangled purposefully, but it's actually, if at all, the points within the node have been randomly rearranged. As It's as if the node was a bag of ball bearings and the flux took them. The pathways tied to account for, tried to account for the rearrangement once the system came back on, online. Hence, the tangle. Peaky pauses as, he, as the node continues to unwind. Although, Peaky muses, it was less like shaking a bag of ball bearings and more like making them all simultaneously occupy a super superposition of every possible position in the bag before locking them back into a new configuration. They smile seepersly, but that's a technicality. So does any of this help us, you say? For now, not especially. It explains the damage the flux does to the systems, but the method is an exotic one. Peaky runs a hand through his hair. What we need to know is what it is, what is causing it, where it is coming from. Peaky turns away from the screen, meeting your eyes, and there's something else. They pause. Have you spoken to the refugees? Yes. Peaky lowers his voice instinctively. What they are reporting, massive system failures, cascading collapses of life support, of terraforming systems, data corrupts, and piggy swallows. 
Flux shouldn't do that. It can't fundamentally rearrange the structure of systems, especially those poor, poorly shielded but totally collapsing heavy duty industrial systems. Fail safes and all, they don't, that doesn't make sense. Those kinds of systems are built for deep space, for solar flares and radiation. The flux might penetrate them, but any configuration should have been repairable. Kiki looks back at the system where decoding nodes lie amongst fully open lies almost fully open, a shadow, a shadowy pattern of negative space that exists within its scrambled interior darkens the screen like a set of bruises showing the pattern of the object that made them. I need to look into something. I have an idea of what might be causing this wave, triggering the flux, but I need time to research. Can I help? Piki shakes his head, I'm sorry sleeper, but I want to keep this to myself for now. If you needed something to do, the Flitilla could surely do with the help. From what I've heard from Essie, things are tense here. Where is Essie? Peaky glances around the bay. Must be out. I've been focusing on this, so I can't say I've noticed, although the quiet is nice, they smile. Give me some time, sleeper. Peaky turns back to the console. I'll have some answers soon enough, I hope. You take one glance at the uncalling node as you leave. The dark shapes it leaves behind somewhat troubling. You try to you try to shake them from your mind, there are things to be done elsewhere. Okay, so we've got six cycles before that turns back on. So let's rest. Not a bad hand. Right, I'm going to jump across the gap very quickly is to trade a back no okay nobody's there yet okay throw some money at the cat repair myself um Use a single Mataki mushroom to basically get my energy back. So we're not wasting any more money than we need to be. Though I can sell them for a good amount of cash if we need if needs be. Um that's gonna be another three cycles before that's done, and then we still need to harvest. Okay. So the issues that we're having at the moment is that these guys are basically independent nationalists. These guys are basically screwed for some reason or other, and we still have to get into what this exactly is. Um, I'm suspecting they're probably going to be, judging by how it feels, maybe religious. Like religious, like they're fundamentally like the religious group out of the out of the um, the refugees, because one seems to be practical one seems to be strongly political so it would make sense that the third one is going to be basically religious in bent as their main sort of defining characteristic so let's get this done now you notice a bug in the wind cycling system and to fix it Ike gives you a knowing look seeming like you are proving yourself okay making ourselves useful here we go I see you have been contributing. Aki stands next to it as the dust house, dust house window. I was unsure of what to expect when you joined the Fatilla on its voyage. So I wasn't sure what to expect when we joined the Fatilla on its voyage to the Eye, but after joining a journey across the systems, then the quarantine, then the flux, reaching all the way out here too. Aki stops herself. Thank you. She bows a little. The other ships have only been interested in sending us supplies, which we grow all we need. He gestures at the dust house. What the dust house needs, that is the problem that concerns us. She smiles and turns to you. Shall we go inside? Into the dust house, you say? Where else? He taps away at the panel by the window. Seems only fair that you are help that your help um, only seems fair that after your help with the support systems you get to see what it is that you are maintaining. Aki leads you to an opening besides the window. You pass through a dark, changing room. You notice Aki is sliding on an oxygen mask and visor. 
She looks at the swirling dust inside. Inside is just like Ember's step. Thin atmosphere, constant dust storms, nothing that will bother you. She passes you a mask. The dust isn't exactly pleasant to inhale, however, so take this. You hold it onto, you, on, it onto your face. She leads you through a, a short decontamination tunnel with its fizzing panels of purifying light and then through into the dust house. Immediately the wind and the heat hits you. You feel the rough waves of dust scattering across your face and you peer through the ember, the ember muck, murk, your feet sliding on sifting piles of sand. Welcome to Step, or the emulation of it, at least. Aki's voice sounds distant, echoey. The terraforming process only managed to provide a limited atmosphere around the moon, one which is slowly escaping. It has been like this since I was born, so I got used to the idea. You catch her bright eyes through the amber dust. So did anything? So did everything else that lives there. You feel something hard beneath your feet, beneath the sand, like a coil of ropes. What is under the sand? It is step silk. It is one of the plants we established on steps. He kicks away some of the red sand. Like any any bar bast fibre, it can be retted and woven into clothes. I am weaving some made from it myself. It is one of the many species adopted, adapted to the steps since Solheim's collapse, which is why it must be preserved. She stares out into the swirling dust. It is much refugee as we are, and the dust houses hold hundreds of other species. You look at the pale, you look at the pale, un unassuming root, threading, f threading thickly through the sand. Aki watches you silently. Had enough? It would, be, it would be easier to speak outside. Aki leads you back out through the decontamination tunnel, which blasts the dust from both you with a burst of metallic tasting air and into the changing room. Aki hangs up both the mask, patiently waiting your question. What happened on Ember's step, you say? Aki pauses, pulling the shroud around her. She looks small and pale inside its layers. Step was al already a doomed world, she sniffs. When Solheim gave the terraforming contract to Cybelli, they believed they could build an atmosphere, but the moon's erratic orbit made it impossible to maintain. By the time of Solheim's collapse, the atmosphere was already fading, and Cybele's attention was on Ember's half. After the collapse, Selbele fell too, its research is scattering across the moons and any central organisation lost. Since then, my parents' generation worked tirelessly to survive, to adopt what we had to, a to the failing moon. The step silk, the other adapted species, are the life's work of the step's colonies. So when the flux started to collapse, our computer systems corrode and destroy our life support, our water supply, our agriculture, we had to leave. Aki sits heavily on a nearby bench. Soon the only traces of the step will be on this ship. Aki begins to cry quietly. We are unsure what to do. Where did the flux come from? Aki does not respond, but continues sobbing. You understand why this ship, why the refugees from the steppe are so different. Their world was already dying when the flux arrived. Ember's steppe is a terraformed moon, a parcel atmosphere, established colonies, agriculture, and yet when the flux event started, its people had to leave. You think of the eye and the delicate, delicate web of decaying systems it rests upon. What hope does a ruined station have against a wave that corrupts, corrodes, and collapses? Aki interrupts your thoughts, rubbing her eyes. Not everyone left. There wasn't room to take all the people and fill the dust houses. My parents, her friends, and many others stayed, she sniffs. We carried a step for them. So this is the thing, because the thing is that they're trying to preserve their culture at the expense of themselves. You left people, you say? I hope you would I hope you would understand Aki stands up and turns away. I wanted you to understand the importance of these dust houses of what they contain, she leads you back into the corridor. If the flux event continues to reach out to the eye, we need to build protections to ensure their safety. Aki meets your eye. What about the people, you say? Aki looks away. We aren't our idiot sleeper. We could chose to carry this burden, we will survive. These dust houses are already decaying. I have seen it. He stares into the dust. We had thought they would last longer, but they 
but that last flux event help us see she looks at you please I will when you are ready we will begin the preparations for reinforcing the dust houses we need to be ready for the next flux event Aki's eyes sign with the last of her tears I'm she takes a deep breath I will see you soon Aki drifts away from the corridor leaving you alone once more at the viewing window watching the ragged delicate traces of the moon known as Ember's Step. Okay, so that's another... So they're basically trying to preserve their culture at all costs, even if it costs them everyone in it. Sort of like, almost sort of like a message. Um, like that they have to keep going at all costs. So... East... That's that's a hard one, I'm not going to lie. Let's try this. Lost a little bit of energy, but we did get a tick on the tracker. That's fine. Um Let's sleep. That's a really bad hand, but that's for next time, folks. I've been Cornish Knight. This has been Citizen Sleeper, and the story continues. And we'll see where we go from here. I'll see you again next time. Goodbye.